Thank you. Well, good evening, councillors and members of the public. Uh, before we commence the meeting, I'd like to draw your attention to the fire regulations which are on the screen behind me and the small screen alongside the public gallery. Uh, also, could you please ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent? And councillors, can I please remind you to speak directly into the microphone and make sure your card is pushed firmly into the console? Members of the public, I'd like to say that as a committee, we understand that matters under consideration tonight may be emotive. However, please be respectful of those around you in the public gallery and the committee. Uh, so we move on to the main items of business. Uh, the minutes. The minutes of the meeting which took place on the 7th of September 2016 have been laid on the table for the last 30 minutes. Are you content that I sign these as a correct record of that meeting? Agreed. Thank you. Apologies for absence. Have there been any apologies for absence, Gary? Yes, thank you, Chairman. We've received apologies for absence from Councillor Peter Martin, Simon Fulton and Liz Wheatley. Thank you. Have members declared any interest before the meeting? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, Councillor Nick Williams has declared a pecuniary interest in planning application item B1. That is because um, he has done work for the um, owner of the, of, of the flat involved. Um, as a result, Councillor Williams will be leaving the chamber prior to consideration of B1 um, and we'll take no part in the vote on that item. Um, yourself, Councillor David Ells, have also declared a pecuniary interest in planning items B2 and B3 as you are the agent and in planning item B4 as you are the applicant and so therefore you will leave the chamber prior to the consideration of those three items tonight. Um, as a result, we need the committee to agree a chairman for consideration of B2, B3 and B4 and I believe you have somebody you'd like to nominate, Councillor Else? Yes, thank you, Gary. I'd like to nominate Councillor Tom Martin to take over as chairman for consideration of items B2, B3 and B4. Committee, may I have your agreement? Agreed. Thank you. That is agreed. Uh, do members have any other non-pecuniary or disclosable pecuniary interest to declare? Jolly good. Okay, uh, relevant updates. Uh, Peter, are there any updates to government guidance or legislation that the committee should be aware of? I'll come back to that. Thank you, Chairman. I do not have any updates for members today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have there been any questions received from members of the public, Gary? None received, Chairman. Quarterly appeals report. Uh, Tim, can you introduce the report to the committee, please? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members, you'll see that I've, um, I've done a fairly detailed summary of the inspector's comments on each appeal before you. Um, so rather than talk about each individual case, um, I was just going to draw upon just a couple of the cases which I think are, um, are, are fairly of interest. Um, so turning firstly to 0468, which is on page 8 of the agenda, Foxy in the South Hall, um, this was a scheme um, to replace two, two dwellings up on the um, Charter House here, Charter House Road, uh, with nine dwellings. Um, the inspector considered that the proposal would have a significant adverse effect on the character and appearance of the area. Um, it should be noted in this in this case that strong weight was given to the local plan policies D1 and D4 in that respect, um, and weight was also given to policy H4 in regards to the housing mix. Um, so overall, the the inspector noted the benefits of the new housing provision. However, in this case, the harm identified to the character of the local area outweighed this benefit. Um, 1798, which is on page 11. Um, I highlight this to you just because it's in regard to um, policy RD2 of our local plan, um, where the, um, the inspector agreed with, with officer's recommendation on this one. Um, Inspector gave full weight to this policy in, in the assessment, um, and um, and really just for members to, to note that there. Um, funnily enough, I had a an appeal reported in the on the Eastern Committee where the inspector went the other way with officers on policy RD2. So it's it's never an um, increasing debatable policy that we have to deal with it every day as officers. Um, Zero three six seven. Uh, Page 14, um, 
this is an interesting case as this was a um, a proposal put forward on its exceptional design quality um, which was in the green belt and area of outstanding natural beauty um, the key tests of consideration under this proposal was would it be of an acceptable and truly, truly innovative design which would outweigh the harm in principle to the green belt um, the inspector considered in favour of the scheme that the design would have a positive benefit to the local area and specifically noting that the footprint of the dwelling would also be smaller than the existing chicken sheds that they were removing. Um, but I think that's just an interesting case there as we don't get many of these type of applications, particularly in the green belt. Um, but an inspector felt this particular s scheme on its design outweighed the harm to the green belt in this, in this um, respect. Um, so I'd happily take any further questions on any other cases there, uh, Chairman. So um, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, <clears throat> members, any comments? Okay, thank you. So we move on to the applications for planning permission. And uh, just to note that in the event of site inspections being necessary as a result of consideration of the applications at this meeting, these will be held on Monday, the 2nd of November 2016, at a time to be agreed. Um, now we move on to the planning applications, and we're going to slightly rejig the agenda to take item A3, uh, which is reference WA 2016-1067 Wheeler Street Nurseries, Wheeler Lane. And I believe that Councillor James wishes to make a proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would like to propose a site visit um, for this application. I'm sorry I didn't do it earlier, but I thought my colleague had uh, asked for it. Um, but he's not here tonight. Um, because I do think that members here who haven't seen the site, well, it's the access, the site is, um, is, is in, it, there anyway, but it's the access to the site, and I do think my colleagues here should see it, and I think for the residents who live down Wheeler's Lane, or those people who even drive up and down Wheeler's Lane, um, should be aware of all the traffic, and at the same time, I think if we could have a slightly bigger written report from the highways to say why a 4.5 is um, not necessary when 4.5 is necessary, why they have changed their views. I'd be very grateful if we have a bigger bit next time round, but if I had a seconder, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Uh, I think Stefan was prepared to second that, yes? I'm very pleased to second, yeah. Okay, members, so you've heard the proposal that we defer consideration of this application until we've had a, a site visit and then reconvene here at the next available opportunity. All those in favour? That's unanimously agreed. Thank you, members. Um, so, people in the public gallery, if any of you had come along for that application, I, I do apologise, but um, that you've, you've wasted your time, but... Uh, Okay, so if we go back to the agenda then, item A1, reference WA 2016. Could I just clarify, did you say that the site visit was on the 2nd of November? No. That is the date that's scheduled for site visits resulting from this committee meeting. Right. Yes, because it is on the same day as our next planning meeting. Right. Officers, any comments on that? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, th I think it would probably be on the 31st of October, which is the Monday. Um, hopefully members will be content with that, but we can double-check and confirm for members um, for that and the, the committee meetings on the 2nd. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If the officers could... Com thank you for pointing that out, Councillor Bolton. We will be advised of the date in due course. Right, so proceeding onwards, um, item A1, reference WA 2016-1629, Tigbourne Farm, New Road, Wormley. Zara, would you like to introduce the application to the committee, please? Thank you, Chairman. 
An application has been received for the change of use to five existing buildings to provide six dwellings. The site is located between the villages of Wormley and Hambledon on the western side of Petworth Road and is accessed via New Road. The site is currently developed by the main farmhouse and eight outbuildings of which the main farmhouse and two barns are Grade 2 listed buildings. There is also a well on site near the farmhouse which is classified as a heritage feature. The change of use would create an additional six dwellings on the site with the inclusion of Tigbourne Farmhouse. This would result in seven residential dwellings within the subject site. But the proposal would also include the removal of a large open stable and hay barn. The six proposed dwellings would comprise of one two-bedroom dwelling, which is named the Granary, uh, two three-bedroom dwellings, which is the Oak Barn and the Wheat Barn, here in blue and light pink, and three four-bedroom dwellings, which would be the Dutch Barn, the Dairy and two Dairy Parlours here. A communal uh, cycle bay and waste bin storage and garage is shown above here with the waste collection above. 17 car parking spaces would be provided on site. So this is the existing elevations to the farmhouse which would remain unchanged by the proposed development. And again, the Dutch barn where there are no proposed changes to the elevation. Uh, this is the wheat barn which also has no proposed changes and the granary, which also has no proposed changes to the elevations. Uh, the oat barn would have a minor change to the elevation, indicated down here in, oops, go back. down here in red, uh, to provide an additional window. Uh, the dairy parlour would have a change to the elevation, indicated here in red, with three additional windows along the southern elevation and the implements garage would have three additional doors indicated here in red uh, provided for the cycle track and sorry the cycle racks and the waste and recycling bins uh, this is the proposed floor plan for the development and the first floor the only changes internally would be an increase in the mezzanine floor in the Dutch barn to provide for additional bedroom and in the dairy parlour to provide uh, for additional bedrooms which would create a mezzanine as well. Uh, the change would also involve uh, internal walls to divide the wheat barn and the oat barn which are currently connected to the farmhouse. And this is site photographs of the current site. So this is the granary building here. Uh, this is looking east towards Tickbourne Farm. And this building here is the wheat barn and this is the oat barn here and the existing farmhouse. Uh, these are just site photos of the oat barn and the arrows indicate the direction which the photos have been taken. And again, this is the wheat barn, and this is the granary, and the Dutch barn, and this is the dairy parlour. The dairy parlour will be converted into two separate dwellings with a dividing wall between the centre here. And this is the implements garage. Okay, the proposed development is located within the Greenbelt and within the AOMB and AGLV. Planning permission has been previously granted for the conversion of existing buildings to create ancillary residential accommodation, farm office and indoor swimming pool. The works which are currently being carried out on the site uh, relate to these previous approvals. A site visit confirmed that the works being carried out on site uh, were the previous planning permissions and the works do not include uh, any of the works that are subject of the planning application before you. 
in accordance with paragraph 90 of the MPPF, uh, reuse of previously developed land in buildings within the green belt may not constitute inappropriate development provided the buildings are of permanent and substantial construction and provided they preserve the openness of the green belt and do not conflict with the purposes of the land. <coughs> The proposal subject of this application would be predominantly internal works only, with minor works to be carried out externally. Uh, the proposal would be wholly contained within the existing footprint of the buildings on site, and furthermore, the proposal would uh, remove two large outbuildings, which would be considered to improve the openness of the green belt and conserve the natural landscape of the AOMB and AGLV. Uh, the proposal is wholly compliant with Council's parking requirements, waste storage and compliant with technical space standards for internal space and outdoor amenity space. Uh, whilst the site is located outside of the rural sediment boundaries, the site is located within close walking proximity to Whitley Station, approximately 850 metres, and two bus stops which are approximately 220 metres from the site. Uh, which can provide alternative means of transport uh, for pri um, in comparison to private vehicles. Uh, the change of use of the buildings would not prevent the ongoing use of the surrounding farmland from continued use uh, for agricult agricultural purposes such as grazing. Uh, officers consider that the works which have already been carried out um, have been done so are of high standard and the proposed plans would continue to create a high quality residential development that would preserve the special interest of the site and the Grade 2 listed buildings and their setting. Officers consider that the change of use would not harm the rural character of the area and that there would be no material harm in allowing the separate occupation of the buildings which already have the benefit of planning permission for ancillary accommodation. Uh, I bring attention to the update sheet which has been provided to the members for item A1. Uh, an additional consultee response was received from Thames Water. Uh, no concerns were raised from Thames Water, however they have requested an informative to be included regarding minimum pressures and flow rates from Thames Water pipes. Six additional objections and one letter of observation were received regarding the proposed development, which raised concerns in relation to the erosion of the Greenbelt, increased traffic on the road network, and potential urban sprawl as a result of the proposal. The additional objections received were considered to be consistent with those which were received prior to the completion of the officer's report. Uh, officers are satisfied that the development would not significantly harm or demonstrably outweigh the benefits of the proposal when assessed against the policies and the MPPF taken as a whole. Officers therefore recommend that subject to conditions 1 to 6 and informatives 1 to 6 set out on page 56 and 59 of the report, plus informative seven as set out on the update sheet, sheet permission be granted. Thank you, Zyra. Very full description of the development, thank you. Uh, this is a public speaking item. The procedure is detailed on the back of the laminated cards on your seats and I believe the procedure has also been explained to you. Uh, we were due to have an opponent speaking but um, he's now not speaking, so may I invite the supporter, Buddy Subra, to speak, please. Good evening, Mr. Subra. You have four minutes from when you begin speaking. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, We've received 14 objections, many of which are duplicates from a, from a husband and wife team. The case officer's report is really comprehensive and addresses the third party comments. However, I would like to point out a few facts not covered in the report. The nearest objector is 270 meters from our buildings. The rest are between 400 meters and one kilometer away. None have a view of our buildings. We do not have a septic tank. We have a treatment plant discharging drinking water that is emptied twice a year. 
Although only seven dwellings, by law we have to provide 17 cars parking. New Road is quite wide and underutilized. On Wednesday, 28 September, one week ago, during rush hour, I filmed the, the traffic flow between 8.20 and 9.15 a.m. There were 40 vehicles in all, equivalent to only one car every three minutes each way. The video, of course, is available upon request. Following the 2012 consents, all buildings are now fully restored or under advanced restoration to a high standard, using the finest materials and highly skilled local artisans. As a result, five buildings are in use as ancillary residential accommodation and one as an estate office. No additions or extensions to the existing <coughs> buildings are proposed. Externally, only four windows facing the garden are to be added to two buildings. Otherwise, all other changes are internal. Safe policy C3 <coughs> of the local plan does not seek to prevent all forms of development within AONB and AGLV. Rather, it seeks to ensure that new development will not cause any harm. Our proposal relates to the change of use of existing buildings which are not <coughs> readily visible from anywhere outside the confines of the site and will not in any way cause harm to the landscape character of the area. Indeed, the area hereabouts will be significantly enhanced by the demolition of the removal and the removal of the existing stables and hay barn and with combined footprint of 420 square meters. The pre-app officer did not suggest any harm would be caused to the AONB or AGLV. On the contrary, she wrote, it is considered that the external treatment of the buildings that have already been restored to has been carried out to high standard. And if the two buildings already identified are removed, there would be an improvement not just to the setting of the listed building, but also to the appearance of the site within the landing landscape setting. Both officers acknowledge that the proposal is appropriate development in the Greenbelt, and it will, cause, it will not cause any harm to the listed buildings or the setting. Whilst being situated in a rural area, the site is well served by public transport. 700 meters away is White Whitley Station and it's surrounded by four bus stops. Furthermore, NPPF continues to stress the need for efficiency by reusing previously developed land and buildings, thus increasing densities in order to achieve more sustainable developments. More importantly, there are no objections to the proposal from statutory consultees, including the highways, drainage, wildlife and environmental authorities. Finally, the UK government defined three important dimensions to sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental. The proposal will fulfill all of them. Tigbon Farm will increase economic activities in the area, thus contributing to building a strong, responsive, and competitive economy. The homes will support a strong and healthy social community by contributing to the supply of required housing. In addition, the environment is improved in three ways. The conversion is a low carbon supply of housing. The building already exists. The homes will be better maintained and less likely to fall into disrepair. And finally, because of the proximity of transport, this will result in low carbon living. In light of all this, I trust that you will be in a position to accept your officer's recommendation to grant approval of the application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Subra. Members, I open it up to you. Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is in my patch. I fully support the officer's recommendation. Um, I think we're very lucky to have um, architects and developers who restore buildings to a high level that they have. Um, and I see absolutely no problem in um, allowing this application. Um, it also gives us six houses extra instead of just the one, instead of building six somewhere else. So I'm a great believer in subdivision and maintaining what's already there. It's built. It, there is no problem to anywhere. And jolly lucky they live in New Road and they can walk to the station. Thank you. I fully support it. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Martin. I'm, I'm happy to support Councillor James in that. Um, I, I, I think uh, we so often see um, poor design. Um, at this committee um, and, and, um, uh, and, and all that comes with that. So uh, actually what we've got here is, is good use and it's, it's a good design. So um, I, I think we, we ought to recognise that and I'd be happy to support the re officer's recommendations. Councillor Bolton. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, in principle, I'm sure I agree with my colleagues, but can I just clarify, on the top of page 51, there's a statement which seems to imply that the location is some distance from any town or village where public transport is infrequent. 
But at the same time, we've heard <coughs> statements that there is public transport. Perhaps the officers could clarify, please. Officers, would you like to clarify that? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, so the, the site, as we've, we've heard, is, is, is in close proximity to the station. I know, I know the road well, and there is available bus stops, and I think it's just on the right of, of the access, so that, that is available there. So um, apologies if that's not clear in the report, but that is um, the position on the ground. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, when I first looked at the um, location plan, that very narrow access shown there did trouble me, particularly with the fact that uh, this parking space is for um, 14 vehicles, which to me represents quite a significant increase in vehicle activity. However, having um, been um, today, actually, um, in front of the uh, entrance to that uh, access, I feel that um, there isn't a problem after all, because even though the Tarm Macadam uh, supports um, one vehicle in any one direction at, at a time, there is sufficient sort of grass on either side, so there's certainly the space for vehicles to sort of overtake one another. Now, I know that's spoiling the grass, but at least there's space and it doesn't uh, really inconvenience uh, vehicle movement. Um, so I am very happy um, that that, uh, has, that possible problem has been um, dealt with. Also very much um, appreciate how the report was put together, well argued, and I could fully support the conclusions that were drawn. Tonight, I particularly valued the preparation of the photographs, and the photographs linked with a compass pointer um, and I hope that that particular technique will take us, for, you know, be adopted as a standard going forward, because then it really does establish where we are and what we're looking at very clearly. There's just one thing that I'd like to ask. The um, page 45, we are referred to the historic buildings officer, and it said the garden boundaries would need to be appropriately managed to ensure that the setting would not be adversely affected. Now, is there a condition that actually covers that point? I'm not sure there is, but I might not be interpreting things correctly. Zara, would you like to respond to that? Sorry, I just don't have page 45 in my copy of the agenda. Uh, <laughs> but the plans that form part of the application do specify the boundary treatments that would be provided between each residential property and they and they do accord with the listed building officer's recommendations. Additionally there is a listed building consent uh, that's also that will also be determined by this application which would also have a condition requiring that. Thank you very much for that and I fully support the officer's recommendation. Thank you Councillor Lee. Uh, any last questions before we move to the recommendation? Very good. Okay, so the recommendation is that subjects to conditions 1 to 6 and informatives 1 to 6, as set out on pages 56 to 59 of the report, plus the additional informative 7 as set out on the update sheet, permission be granted. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to grant? And that's unanimous. Thank you, members. The recommendation to grant is agreed.
Right, so the next item on the agenda is item A2, reference WA 2016-1554, land at Pine Cottage, Peat Common, Elstead, GU860X. Flo, would you like to introduce the application to the committee, please? Thank you, Chairman. The proposal is for the erection of two dwellings and associated works following the dem demolition of existing garden sheds. Um, you'll see on this plan the site outlined in red. The site is located to the northeast of Peak Common and faces the recreation ground to its southwest. As you can see, the site is surrounded by residential dwellings on the other three sides. The site is accessed along a private road that links to Thursley Road along Peak Common on here. This aerial photograph shows a recent image of the site. The site I'm just highlighting right now. As you can see, the site comprises a large area of hard standing, which relates to the current lawful use of the site as a coach store, from there where there is a twice daily bus operated during term time. The block plan shows how the two proposed dwellings would lie within the site. The two dwellings would sit adjacent to each other and front the recreation ground in line with the neighbouring property, Pine Cottage. Plot two to the southeast, the right hand side, um, has a single storey area to its rear to reduce its height where it would be closest to the neighbouring dwellings. There would be on site parking for three cars for each property. Here are photographs of the site. The first photo shows a view across the recreation ground towards the site with the two dwellings fitting in the area I'm highlighting. The photo below that, so bottom left, shows the left-hand side of the site so viewed um, sort of in the same direction as um, the initial photograph. Top right is the middle of the site and bottom right shows towards the right-hand side of the site towards Tarrant Cottage. This slide shows the proposed layout of the dwellings and their elevations. The dwellings would have a similar design but have minor differences in respect to fenestration, primarily to their front elevation. The properties would each have a kitchen, diner, lounge, utility and toilet to the ground floor. To the first floor, each dwelling would have four bedrooms, one of which would be en suite and a main bathroom. This image shows a street scene view and how the dwellings would appear from Peak Common and the recreation ground. In conclusion, officers consider that the proposal would comprise infilling within the village and the partial redevelopment of a brownfield site, which would be acceptable in the green belt in accordance with paragraph 89 of the MPPF. The proposal would conserve the landscape character of the AONB and AGLV and would not have any likely, likely significant effect on the integrity of the SPA or SAC. Officers consider that the proposed dwellings would be of an acceptable scale, size, bulk, mass and design and would not result in any material harm to visual or residential amenity subject to conditions. Officers consider that the use of the site for residential development would be acceptable and that, on balance, any commercial or employment losses would be acceptable. The matters of technical opinion are the principle of development, the lawful use of the site, the green belt within the rural settlement, housing land supply, the loss of commercial land, the standard of accommodation and amenity space, the effect on the SPA and the SAC, highways access and parking, and trees. And the matters of judgment are the impact on visual amenity, the impact on landscape character, and the impact on residential amenity. If I could just draw members' attention to the update sheet, following the completion of a habitats regulation assessment in respect of the SPA, Natural England was satisfied that there would not be a significant impact as a result of the proposal. One additional letter of representation raising objection has been received. 
No new reasons for objection were raised, and all the issues have already been addressed within the officer report. So in conclusion, officers recommend that subject to conditions 1 to 10 and informatives 1 to 5, as set out on pages 85 to 89 of the report, that permission be granted. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Flo. Uh, this is a public speaking item, and uh, I believe the procedure has been explained to you. May I invite the opponent, Mrs. Juliet Williams, to speak? Good evening, Mrs. Williams. You have four minutes from the time when you begin speaking. That'll be it. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. We um, would like to say that we're not objecting to the development of the site per se, but that the current proposed development we feel has several major unsatisfactory aspects and we take into consideration the views of the Parish Council and the fact that there have been seven um, oppositions to this development, and we feel that one development, um, one dwelling would be more appropriate. Our objections are as follows. Firstly, we feel that it is an overbearing structure that will lead to loss of open aspect. Plot two has a much higher roof line than neighboring houses, and windows that were clearly overlook would view. The roof line is half a meter higher than the neighboring properties and the windows will see directly into three rear bedrooms, the main downstairs living spaces, and also the garden. The rear to wood view is currently two-thirds screened and one-third open aspect. The proposed plot two will sit directly six metres from the rear fence of wood view in front of the open aspect, and its sheer bulk will dominate the rear visual aspect for both wood view and the side front aspect of Tarrant Cottage. The agent has proposed screening. However, we have lived in this property for 11 years and screening will further enclose our small back garden. We chose the property for its open access because we have a small garden. And if this application is allowed, we will be this will be completely obliterated, leading to significant loss of light and loss of open aspect and, aspect and amenity. The butlers have lived in Tarrant Cottage for 40 years and have enjoyed their open aspect, which again will be severely compromised. We have concerns with the measurements that have been given. The report states that the step back window is 11 metres away from um, the um, boundary of wood view. We measured this plot with the agent and it actually falls six metres from the rear fence and the step back window on the one side is a further 2.5 metres away, giving a total of 8.5 metres and not 11 metres. Appearance and character. The size of the property, especially plot two, is not commensurate with the pattern development in the area. Both dwellings are significantly higher at more than half a metre than neighbouring um, properties and therefore not appropriate in terms of scale and mass as detailed in policies D1 and D4. The design does not blend with the style of cottages around it, which are traditional cottages of two up, two down with central porches. The new house is being sold overlooking the green, but to meet the target number of parking spaces, one parking space will be to the front of the property, therefore affording no front garden. Overall, as noted by Elstead Parish Council and several neighbours, the proposal represents a considerable overdevelopment of the site. Layout and density. The Elstead Village design statement states that houses should be built on reasonable size plots and where possible blend with those plot sizes surrounding them. The plot size for the three neighbouring properties, Woodview, Windhurst and Tarrant Cottage, are all between 630 and 680 square metres. The total plot size for the proposed development is 660 square metres, with plot two being only 300 square metres, therefore significantly smaller than neighbouring properties and too small for the size of house proposed. Horse chestnut tree. The horse chestnut tree is an integral part of both Woodview and Tarrant Cottage and gives the most important visual aspect to the outside area. The agents have offered to remove the tree as it is considered diseased, but subsequent inspection by the tree surgeon reveals that it is treatable. The planning report recommends the tree to be protected by a five metre fence encircling it. However, we do not feel it would give the tree sufficient protection since the rear wall of the proposed plot two is at six metres from the tree. Therefore, it can't allow for scaffolding and footings. The roots of the tree can extend up to 20 metres, and given the proximity of the proposed property to this tree, we are quite certain that roots will be damaged. To conclude, we are really very upset at the proposed developments, given that these are our forever homes, and our enjoyment of them will be severely compromised by the, um, by the building of the plot two property. We feel it represents an overbearing structure which will lead to um, loss of privacy and our open aspect, and will be a harmful visual amenity for both Woodview and Tarrant Cottage. Is that it? Can I just? 
<laughs> um, secondly, that it has an appearance and character that does not blend in well with the area and the surrounding cricket field. Thirdly, the layout and density is not appropriate. And fourthly, that there is a significant threat to an established mature horse chestnut tree in the Garden of Woodview. We would close by drawing your attention to your guide where you recommend that when considering the effect of a development on a neighbour, you should reverse the situation and consider if you would feel if how your neighbour were to propose a similar development. This is just too close and too overbearing. Thank, Thank you. you, Mrs Williams. Now, may I invite the supporter, Andrew Bandos, to speak. Good evening. You have four minutes from the time you start speaking. Good evening, members. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my client's planning application for two houses on land adjacent to Pine Cottage, which is sited on the northern side of Peak Common. My client is seeking to achieve a small, low-density development of two houses on what is currently a commercial bus storage site. As set out in the committee report, the application site was within a residential area of Elstead Village and within the settlement boundary. The commercial site is bordered by residential dwellings and their garden amenity areas, both to the sides and rear of the site. As acknowledged in the committee report, the site has been used for the parking and garaging of coaches for over 40 years. Six large 52-seater coaches were originally parked on the site adjacent to residential properties and their gardens. The commercial activities on the site have been less intensive since 2003, when the previous owners of the site started to scale down their commercial coach operation. Today, just one single minibus operates from the site. Nevertheless, the committee report acknowledges that the commercial use on the site is not constrained by any planning conditions relating to hours of working and type and numbers of coaches that can be parked on the site. As such, the site is unfettered by any restrictions on the number of vehicle trip movements that can be made from the site, both during the day as well as late into the evening. In addition, it is noted that the site has a less than ideal access for large commercial vehicles and is not in keeping with the surrounding residential area. In this respect, we consider small residential use of the site would be a far better use than the continuation of this existing coach parking and storage use, which is a non-conforming use in a residential area. We welcome the fact that your planning officers are supporting the scheme. The officer report is very detailed and thorough and covers all the material planning issues pertaining to this development proposal. Your officers have stated that the site is a bus storage does not make a significant contribution to the character and amenities of the village. Indeed, your officers consider the proposed dwellings would be very much improve the, the site's appearance and would safeguard the amenities of neighbouring residential residents going forward. It is considered that the proposed two detached dwellings would be of an appropriate design incorporating design features that are found in the neighbouring properties. The proposed dwellings would reflect the form, setting, local building style and heritage of Elstead. Indeed, the design of the scheme has evolved following extensive pre-application discussions with the planning department uh, and also my client has spoken to residents and members of the parish council. Each dwelling would have four bedrooms and provide off-street parking for three spaces. Members will note that County Highways Engineer is satisfied with the proposed parking layout and visibility displays and therefore raises no objections to the proposal. In addition, there is adequate separation between the proposed dwellings and surrounding neighbouring properties so as not to result in any material overlooking or loss of privacy. Officers state that a good separation distance can be achieved between windows of nearest proposed dwelling and existing houses at the rear to ensure that there would be no material overlooking. The officer report also concludes that the design of the proposed dwellings would comply with local plan policies D1 and D4. The proposed garden and amenity areas are considered by the planning officers to be of a suitable size and standard for the size of houses proposed, and the internal dwelling floor areas would fully comply with government technical housing standards for internal space. The committee report acknowledges the fact that the proposed dwellings would be located on a plot sited between existing residential development in the village and as such would be read in conjunction with the surrounding residential development without any detrimental impact on the AOMB and AGLV, thus ensuring that the character of both those landscape designations is maintained. It is noted that no objections to proposal are raised by Thameswater, Natural England or Surrey Wildlife. 
So in summary, it is hoped that members will concur with their officers that the proposal is not in conflict with government advice as contained in the MPPF and the proposal would not harm the character of the rural village, would not be harmful to the Greenbelt, the AOMB and LGOV, and would not have a material detrimental impact on the amenities and neighbouring residential occupiers. Finally, I would just like to say that a tree is not protected. Uh, there has been no objections from the tree officer with regards to the tree and the site has been surveyed from topographical plans. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bandos. Uh, before I open it up to the members, uh, the ward councillor, Councillor Jenny Els, would like to speak to this proposal. Uh, councillor Els, you also have four minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Well, I have no doubt that this plot will be developed. I don't think anybody does. And whilst I fully appreciate that the village of Elstead needs more houses, I'm not, a sh not at all sure how many more four-bedroom houses it needs. There will be many opportunities, I'm sure, for those to be provided by other developers over the next few years. But what we are in dire need of, along with many of Waverley's villages, is smaller, less expensive homes for younger buyers to come and live in the village. These houses are a nice design, but they are slightly cramped. I have visited the site, so I have seen the close proximity. It's not quite demonstrated on that screen as it really is when you're there. That second house, the one on the right, I think it's plot two, is very close to the boundary. Uh, the Garden of Woodview is depicted as being quite large there. It actually isn't a huge garden. And so that plot too does look over. It's very overbearing. Um, and also to the property next door, to the right of, of Woodview. Uh, I think that um, two smaller dwellings, or even just one dwelling would be good to consider to lessen the impact on the surrounding area with which, in my view, the density is definitely out of keeping. And I have every sympathy with the neighbours who are objecting and whose enjoyment of their homes and gardens will most certainly be affected. While I fully appreciate the right to a view is not a planning matter, the overbearing nature of two large four-bedroomed houses is so I would be very grateful if this committee would seriously consider that issue, which I believe is, uh, uh, has been underlined under the judgment um, uh, list, which we've just been seeing. Visual amenity, I think the two houses are too cramped together. Um, and the residential amenity of, of the existing um, residence is affected. Um, and also the residential amenity of plot two. That will be a very small garden for a four-bedroom house. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Els. Uh, open it up to the members. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, in the detail of the report under um, representations um, and uh, the, the, the reasons for raising objection, um, several times the Elster Village design statement cro crops up. Um, and yet that doesn't seem to have been covered in the report, unless I've missed it somewhere, and I have gone through a couple of times now. Um, I was under the impression that village design statements were material planning consideration, and as such, um, I would like advice from officers as to, to why that hasn't been considered, unless I have missed it, at which point, please point me to it, please. Thank you. Officers, would you like to respond? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, of course, it is a material consideration, and you're correct, it's, it's not um, evidenced within the report before you. Um, it's a matter that should be in front of you, but it's not within the report today. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Martin, you'd like um, to come back. If I could, please, um, could I perhaps therefore suggest that we might want to defer this application such that we can consider the... Um, the, the um, uh, the report based on uh, the full set of evidence and the village design statement, please, because I don't think otherwise we've, we've got the full facts in front of us. Does that proposal have support from... Councillor Lee would like to second that. So, members, there is a proposal that we defer this application for um, a further report relating this application to the Elsted uh, design statement. All those in favour? And that's unanimous. 
Okay, thank you, members. So the the, uh, the decision is to defer this application for a further report. Is this where I clear off? Um, oh no, we've got the high street first. Uh, okay, we move on to item B1, reference WA 2016-1502, 139 High Street, Godalming, GU71AF. Chris, would you like to introduce the application to the committee, please? Thank you, Chairman. This application seeks retrospective permission for the installation of a flue to serve the A3 CAFAT 139 High Street in Godalming. This is the location plan for the, for the site. The site's outlined in red. You can see the high street running um, along the northern boundary. And to the south, you've got South Street Car Park. The, um, the site's within the, within the conservation area. However, the, the flue is at the rear of the site and it's visible from the South Street Car Park, but not visible from the high street to the north. Having considered the location of the flue at the rear of the, the site visible from the car park, uh, the officers consider that the proposal is acceptable with regards to the impact on the conservation area. These are the plans for the, for the proposed flue. You can see it runs along the side of the building um, and then up past the windows which are, um, which are shown on the plan there. These are the photographs taken looking at the flu. Um, the photograph on the left-hand side shows the position of the flu running along the side of the building. And the one on the right shows, um, looking at the front of the, um, the building, the, the flu, um, the flu coming, coming up there. The window at the top closest to um, closest to the flu is a first floor, um, first floor flat. Um, the Environmental Health um, Department have been consulted on the application, and they're raising no objections, subject to conditions relating to um, relating to a, a, a new mounting, and also um, a condition to do with the hours of operation. And this is a photograph looking. Um, straight at the, the rear of the site, you can see that the flue is partly screened by a tree um, on the right-hand side there. In terms of the determining issues, um, the principle of development is considered to be acceptable as the flue is an essential facility for the A3 cafe. Uh, the main considerations for the committee are the impact um, on the character and appearance of the conservation area and the impact on neighbouring residential amenities. For the reasons set out in the officer's report, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Members, Councillor Upton. Thank you, Chairman. Having attended and seen this installation, I agree it's of a reasonable nature, but I wouldn't like to live in the flat above because the drumming noise coming from the uh, the equipment uh, needs attenuation. I've, it doesn't seem to have sufficient isolation. I, I agree with the, her, er, the health authority. It does need more substantial uh, silencing. I'm sure the uh, annoyance to the house or the flat owner is coming through the transmitted noise from the air passage, which is usually the problem with this type of insulation. 
and uh, other than the, uh, the actual layout is okay, I agree with the officers in that report, but I can't, I can't agree that it's not causing a deal of stress to the occupier, occupant of the first floor flat. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Upton. Yes, I, I was with you on that site visit, and uh, it certainly it is quite noisy from the outside, and you can only imagine that it being bolted to the side wall of the flat. It uh, drums through that wall, but I, I do note that conditions one and two cover uh, that the uh, applicant has to provide details of, of additional soundproof and that he will provide, and uh, then... Well, I'll leave it to the members to, to expand on that if they wish. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, th this actually is in my ward. This whole saga has had a very checkered history of uh, planning applications and withdrawn ones and applications deemed invalid and so on. And I understand also that uh, in the past this was uh, introduced without appropriate approval. It has made residents, it has driven away residents from this one of the flats because they couldn't stand the noise and the vibration. And I really struggle to support this application if only because of the impact on residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Reynolds. Uh, this is a difficult one. I still can't quite understand why this didn't come up when the application was put forward to build the restaurant in the first place. And um, you know, permission was obviously granted by, by under delegated powers by councillors probably, but for some reason a flu wasn't de deemed to be necessary for a, for a cafe, which I, I think is a bit strange that we didn't, or the planners didn't consider it, or even the builders didn't consider it at the time. So here we have a retrospective um, application for something which obviously is necessary for the, for the um, food food uh, shop underneath it uh, and obviously causing big disturbance to to the resident above it it's a very tricky one i mean the cafe is well used well liked uh, very popular uh, and it's obviously adding vitality to our town center but uh, at the expense of the of a resident above um i won't say no to this application because i think you know it's there we've, we've got a business that's thriving but i think every effort needs to be made to make sure that this doesn't you know, uh, the, the amenity of the resident is protected at all costs. And, uh, you know, officers, I'd like you to be fully convinced that the conditions you're putting in will enable that result to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you. I just wanted to quiz the officers, really, on, on the, con the conditions, really, and actually how enforceable are they? Because the, the difficulty, I, 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 the, the actual... Um, appear, the outward appearance of this, um, I, I'm fairly ambivalent about. It, it is hidden. You don't, you don't see it from, from really very many angles at all. So that I've got no, no great difficulty with. What I do have a difficulty with is the impact on the resident of that flat. And essentially, I guess it's that's impact on residential amenity. Um, and, and okay, we've got these conditions which state that we've got to have uh, minimising a tran transmission of vibrations and stuff. But the difficulty is to what extent. Um, I mean, you, you could minimise it by 0.1 of a percent, which isn't which is imperceptible. But then, you, it could be argued that you have met the condition that you have minimised it. Um, and, and the difficulty I have is is just how tight we are on these conditions, and how how much they will actually mitigate the problem on the resident of that flat, whatever number that flat that is. Uh, because if we can't do that, then. I, I don't see any option other than, than to refuse this. If we cannot really tie down strongly the uh, the conditions, and just wondered if I could get some officer opinion on that, please. Thank you. Did you wish to respond, Peter? Yes, thank you, Chairman. It, it is a really important point, and obviously, clearly, it's it's come around through an, an impact on those residential properties. We've um, and where it's the environmental health team are looking at it as well from an, um, that sort of amenity noise point of view. Um, I'm just looking at the condition in particular that we're, we're talking about, condition one. Um, the, the environmental health team believe that an appropriate piece of equipment can be attached to it that minimises that mitigation, but perhaps to tighten up that condition, maybe I could recommend to officers that we have a, verif sorry, a 
verification report that demonstrates compliance that delivers a level of noise which is appropriate for the residential area and attached to the residential building. Um, that would, you know, sort of appropriate qualified noise engineer um, demonstrated that that bit of equipment's provided and constructed appropriately to mitigate the impact. Um, that would tighten up that condition. Uh, I think the second point is, is obviously we do have open complaints on the site and it's monitoring and enforcing it and delivering it within the agreed timescales as well and that's one thing what point that we we'll take away and see through to from a um, regulation point of view uh, but it would be tightening up that wording to require that verification report particularly thank you chairman uh, thank you peter well, i mean would it be possible for environmental health to produce a figure i mean building regulations have figures for transmission of sound from one property to another i just wondered if they could give us a figure that we could put in that condition which they which the applicant then has to comply with thank you chairman because it's vibration it's slightly different to a noise level so giving a, a specific figure for a noise level we can say so many um, 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 decibels that's the one thank you <laughs> um, but with with vibration we just need something to control and prevent that from happening so it's not specifically a figure um, but environmental health are confident that appropriate bit of equipment to be agreed by them or in consultation with them would can can um, deal with this issue. Thank you, Councillor James. Well, mine is is similar, and what I say is so. If we agree it, what happens if it actually doesn't meet the requirement and the flat is still causing vibration? Do we have to just then remove it? And once it's been given permission, because then they'll just try to say, well, we got permission, but if it can't just go on and on and on so there me needs to be something but if it cannot be achieved then um it just has to stop trading i mean i i, I can come back on that point yes thank you chair and if they couldn't achieve an appropriate mitigation and put that in place we would have to enforce because there's clearly an amenity impact um and that would be to require it removal and replacement or um, amendment appropriately and we can we can enforce against that thank you chairman. Uh, chairman if i could just add to that if if the um situation is found to be satisfactory through the verification report well, then there is a breach of those conditions going forward we'd also have the ability to serve a breach of condition notice that the conditions that have been satisfied as being appropriate will then still be breached so thank you Okay, Councillor Martin would like to come back and then Councillor Bolton would like to come back. Um, thank you, Chairman. Th this might be a sort of sideways look at this, but is it possible at all to essentially make this planning, con if, if we were to approve, to make it um, on a temporary basis so that it came back once the mitigation measures have been put in place for us to review those and then grant permanent, or is, is that overly complicating the process? I'm just very concerned that of the ongoing residential amenity um, and, and I'm just trying I mean it, it may not it sounds like it's probably not possible but I, I, I don't know uh, thank you chair um, I think the, the the key to this is tightening up the first condition and that will be done through the submission of whatever scheme they'll only have three months anyway from the time permission is granted to get this implemented. So they'll need to submit the scheme and that will need to be approved in-house and then they'll have to implement it within three months. So if within, say, four or five months it's not sorted, then at that stage the council can then think to enforce. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Bolton wanted to come back. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, condition three, cl please clarify. This seems to imply that you can only use the machinery or plant between the hours of seven in the morning and six in the evening. The whole point about this restaurant is it goes on late at night and the noise will be devastating in the middle of the night. If, you, if we are seriously saying restrict it to up to six o'clock in the evening, the restaurant cannot function. A um, little bit of local knowledge. When uh, Councillor Upton and I were on site, the chap who runs the Turkish restaurant next door was there, and he said that this cafe now, it opens early in the morning for commuters and closes by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I think he said. 
I mean, we, we have no control over that because presumably they can operate whatever time they want. But if we're controlling the use of the machinery, um, that will restrict their hours, I would think. I don't know. Officers, help. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in terms of the hours we've put down there, they're, they're the hours that they've actually assessed in the report that's been submitted to us. We've taken account of it being a cafe and, cafe and its opening times. Um, they haven't specifically put them forward as their specific opening times, but that's the one that's been assessed. And on the basis of the assessment provided, we've put forward the restriction on what they deem appropriate, subject to the mitigation. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, uh, Councillor, Councillor Reynolds and then Councillor Upton. So I assume this question really, I mean, does the flu have to go against the wall? I mean, can it not sort of be, come out of the, the building and then sort of with, I don't know, some sort of um, assistance um, go up, but not against the wall of the house, which is obviously causing the vibrations, which is causing the disturbance. Is there not another way, no way if a flu can be constructed? Well, even if it's that far away, you're not going to hear it so much, are you? Any comment from the officers? I, I, yeah, I think the application before us is it constructed against the wall. I think that's probably something they would need to explore at a later date if they couldn't achieve this requirement. But we're confident with environmental health officer input, we can we can achieve the desired outcome, and um, probably do, hopefully don't need to go down a full amendment. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Upton. Thank you, Chair. Um, I view this that they've made use of that elevation of the building to get it up a high level. Other restaurants will have to put up a gantry from where it exits from the building on their roof. That will get it away from the flat completely. I, I agree that we uh, should consider the planning application as it is with the constraints put on by our officers. Um, personal knowledge is it can be isolated greatly, but it would mean A, moving away as suggested, and probably vibration mounts on the uh, ironwork that takes it into the building itself. If we do find it unsatisfactory, then they will have to find an alternate route for that to go up to high level, off the side of the house. Uh, flat, I beg your pardon. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hampton. Uh, any last comments before we move to the recommendation? Right, so the recommendation is that subject to conditions one to four and informative one as set out on pages 163 to 164 of the report, permission be granted and, uh, sorry? Point of information. Did we, did officers suggest slightly amending condition I was one? Just, I was just about to come to that, yes. And uh, with, with variations to condition one as stipulated by the officer in our recent discussions. Um, subject to that, permission be granted. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to grant? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And those against? One. Thank you, members. The recommendation to grant is agreed. Which part I will love you and leave you. Okay, thanks, Gary. Thanks for your help. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, carrying on, uh, item B2, WA 2016-1542, Whipley, Tuesday, Lane, Godalming. Uh, Zyra, would you like to introduce the application to the committee, please? Zyra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. 
The application site is on the eastern side of Chusey Lane and is currently developed by a two-storey brick dwelling with detached double garage set within a large plot with mature gardens, trees and hedging. The application seeks approval for a two-storey site extension and a front extension to the existing garage and increase in the garage roof height to accommodate a larger games room and internal alterations to accommodate the proposed two-storey extension. The extension will result in the garage being attached to the dwelling. These are the proposed elevations. Uh, as you can see here, this is the proposed extension which would join the existing garage and also the r increased roof height of the garage. Uh, this slide depicts the existing elevations and the photo on the left is from the front and the photo on the right is from the rear. Uh, this space between the garage and the dwelling is what will be uh, filled in by the proposed extension. Uh, this depicts the existing floor plans of the dwelling and Oh, sorry, the existing floor plans, and this is the proposed floor plans here. Uh, this just uh, depicts the connection between the dwelling and the garage. Uh, the development is wholly compliant with the requirements of the local plan and would not result in harm to the visual or residential amenity of the surrounding area. Conditions have been uh, recommended to ensure that adjoining properties are not overlooked by the first floor windows of the proposed increase in height for the garage. Uh, officers recommend that subject to conditions one to four and informative one as set out in the report that permission be granted. Thank you. Thank you Zara. Members, Councillor Reynolds. Oh, so I was just going to really say propose no objection. I think this is absolutely fine and I'm jealous of having a boot room. Councillor James. I was going to say it actually makes it even better than it was before. Um, the height of the garage is inappropriate to the house, I think, at the moment, and now it looks better. So I fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, members. Well, this comes in, comes in under my uh, my ward, and these are very large plots, um, so it's, uh, they're quite a di quite a separating distance. Um, any last questions from anybody? No. Okay. In which case, the recommendation is that subject to conditions one to four and informative one are set out on pages one seven six to one seven seven of the report. Permission be granted. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to grant, please? And that's unanimous. Thank you. The recommendation to grant then is agreed. Item B3, WA 2016 1598, 46 Latimer Road in Godalming. Richard, would you like to introduce the application to the committee, please? Tim, even. Sorry, thank you, Chairman. Uh, members, the application site outlined here in red um, within the developed area of Godalming, uh, it currently comprises a, a building that's currently two flats. Um, the proposal is to convert it from two flats to one residential dwelling, essentially a ha in a form of a house. Um, here's just the aerial photograph of the, of the site itself. There's no alterations proposed to the outside of the, of the building. Um, you should note that the building itself uh, used to be a dwelling, a uh, house, sorry, in its original form as one dwelling. Um, so the existing floor plans here, so existing first and second floor, two separate flats, um, garage in the bedroom that serves the lower ground floor, um, first floor flat. The proposal um, essentially to take it back into one dwelling. Um, Again, no, no external alterations proposed. Parking remains the same on site, and so does rear garden. Um, really, with this application, determining issues, um, visual amenity, um, the conversion from two to, to one, um, there can be a visual aspect in terms of a larger building essentially becoming a uh, a single house occupancy. Um, in this case, with the character of the existing building um, being, uh, it used to be a, a dwelling in its original form, um, we're happy with the visual aspect. Residential amenity, um, 
no alterations proposed to the external works of the, of the building. So again, impact on neighbouring residential, residential properties we're happy with. Um, loss of residential accommodation, this is a, a, a negative aspect of the, the application. Um, however, given, given its um, original form as a dwelling um, and that the, our local plan policy seeks to resist, list of re resist the loss of residential accommodation rather than residential units themselves, um, it's difficult for us to resist it on this ground. So we're, we're advising that we raise no objection to this aspect even though it does loss in a, in an, uh, a residential property. Um, so on those basis, Chairman, we are recommending permission be granted. Thank you. Members, Councillor James. Um, as we ha Sorry. As, as we made um, six extra dwellings out of one earlier in this evening, we can now, I think, lose one. Um, I've got no problem. Councillor Bolton. Thank you, Chairman. Can I refer to um, page um, 187, policy H8, which, as quoted, says of our existing local plan, the development involving a net loss of existing will not be permitted. Are there any exceptions? to the not being permitted. We well know that um, green, develop, green belt development, development is not permitted, but there are specific exceptions for this. Here the policy seems to state a net loss will not be permitted. So on what grounds can we accept this application unless there are certain exceptions to policy H8? Thank you. Mrs. Sims? Chairman, if I could help there, um, I have to say, over the years, I've never felt that this policy was particularly helpfully worded and has caused a lot of confusion over the years, but 14 years on, we're still working with it. But what it explicitly says is the loss of accommodation and not units. So the point, I think, that Tim was um, making at the beginning of his presentation is that actually, in the round, we're still talking about the same amount of floor space. We may have reduced from two units to one, but we're still talking about the same amount of accommodation. So um, th there is no um, conflict with the policy wording from that viewpoint. And that, I can say categorically, is the consistent view the Council's taken on this policy o over the years, to reassure you on that. Um, uh, in that case, thank you. Thank you. I, I think we could be here all night otherwise. <laughs> Councillor Reynolds. Well, I think just to say, after nine years as a councillor, I'm glad we make the odd exception every now and then. I think it's a perfectly good opportunity to turn what are probably not a very nice upstairs flat, really, to a very fine family house. And uh, I'm sure we'll find, given that we're now building much smaller houses elsewhere, I'm sure those two smaller buildings will be found elsewhere, potentially off a new road in Whitley. Thank you, members. Any last questions? No? Okay. In which case, the recommendation is that subject to conditions 1 and 2, and informatives 1 and 2 are set out on pages 191 and 192 of the report. Permission be granted. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to grant? And that's unanimous. Thank you, members. The recommendation to grant is agreed. And finally, we've got item B4. Give me a musical chairs again. While I'm moving, this is item B for WA 2016-1762, Winter Cottage in Elstead. When you're ready, Jenny, would you like to introduce the application to the committee? Okay, uh, this is the location plan. You may hopefully recall that we've quite recently had an application on this site. Um, the... The... Um, plans here show the layout of the proposal. The hatched areas show the new extensions and outbuilding that are proposed. The, just to clarify, the planning permission has already been granted for a number of elements on this particular site. So the first floor extension you can hit, see here has been, um, the dormer here and the extensions to the rear. Um, a new outbuilding in the rear garden was also approved um, previously. 
the new part that, that hasn't actually had planning permission previously is the double garage at the front, which would be attached to the porch, which again has already had planning permission. That's just showing you the um, outline of the garage here. Um, and the outbuilding previously, if you recall, it was proposed to demolish the whole of the existing outbuilding and build a, a brand new one. Um, now it's proposed to demolish part of the outbuilding and uh, to erect a smaller outbuilding behind. If I go back to the, go back to the hatched area. Um, if you look at the the plan to the left, you'll see dotted um, the position of a double garage that was proposed as part of the 2011 application, uh, most of which has been implemented other than the garage. The applicants offered to have a condition to not build this garage. Um, so the new garage would actually be equivalent in size to the one that they've agreed they won't um, extend. And just at the end of the presentation, um, we, took, we have photographs showing um, front extensions of similar size and style to the ones that are proposed now. They're actually um, on these two properties here, so they're only three or four doors down from um, Winter Cottage. And just to also, um, although it's maybe not so clear in the plans, but there is quite substantial hedging and vegetation along this boundary and along the boundaries here. So actually any views you get of the extension here are probably going to be more limited than the ones that are already in the street scene. Um, other than that, um, it's um, recommended for approval in accordance with the conditions set out in the report. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Members, any questions? Councillor Reynolds? Uh, no questions. I drive past this house every day, uh, and uh, I think you're absolutely right, actually, where they were proposing to site the garage originally is far more intrusive, I think, than actually what is now going to be proposed to, to do. It's going to be quite neat, quite attractive. You're right, it's very difficult to see. It's a fairly well-screened road. Actually, most of the houses are fairly well screened from the road. Um, I have, apart from the fact that it's the uh, vice chairman of this committee, I really have no objection. Anybody else? No? Okay. In which case, the recommendation is that subject to conditions 1 to 6, and informatives 1 and 2 are set out on pages 211 to 213 of the report. Permission be granted. May I have those in favour of the recommendation? And that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you, members. The recommendation to grant is agreed. There are no items to consider in exempt sessions, so that concludes the meeting this evening. Thank you all, and good night.